Hello and welcome everyone. I'm John RMS, aka Ace Bullion. And today, well, you can see here I have a coin to show. And it's brought to you by the Silver Trader. But this is not just the coin I'm showing. No, because I've already done a video on this. This is the 10 ounce Silver Valiant. And it's a monster of a coin. Now, if you haven't checked out that video, I'm going to leave a link at the end of this video and you can follow it there. But please be sure to check out the links down below in the description and you'll find a link to Ace Bullion and also Silver Trader and how to become a member of my channel. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this. This is gonna be another cool video. Thanks. Right, so here it is. As I said, we've already reviewed the 10 ounce silver Valiant and yep, still here. It's still a beast, it really is. So what do I have in store for you guys today? Well, I do have something a bit smaller and a bit more budget friendly, really. So, da 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 da, yep, we have the one ounce version of the 2021 Silver Valiant. Now, again, all of this is in much to smaller details than the previous one. And I have gone over this uh, coin and there wasn't that much really to pick out. But yeah, we'll see, we'll have a good look. I do think, by the way, the one ounce version looks a lot better. The, I'm gonna tell you that straight up because I'm gonna be 100% honest here, uh, as always. And what I like about it is obviously I'm not getting the feedback on this diamond shape pattern when compared to when I do it on here, it really is a pain to feature. So let's have a good look at this and see if anything is different or whatever we can find. So we do have, as with you know the original, the outside rim is just the you know shiny bits if you like. Um, kind of normal, I guess, BU, uh, you know, version. It's not, you know, matted or anything else. Uh, whereas then you have the ultra high, you know, uh, shine right along the rim, which really played havoc on the 10 ounce bar when I was trying to review it. Uh, we have one ounce fine silver, four nines, and that's just brilliant. And then there's St. George and he's slaying that dragon, which actually I can now get fully in screen. <laughs> that was one of the difficulties that I had when I was filming the 10 ounce bar. Uh, just because, well, obviously the dragon is huge. So we do have some stuff on the outside. You can actually see, as I said, it's reflective. So like, see there's a little fiber right there. If I get all the light, there we go, gone. But the eagle eye people would have spotted a tiny little issue. And no, that's not with uh, without staying. Yeah, there is a milk spot there. I'm not gonna pick up and go through it because we've already discussed this before. But yeah, there's a milk spot right there. And you can't help but notice that there's also a tiny scratch going across it all the way onto the 20, uh, onto the zero. So if you take a look here, you follow the line all the way through. Yeah, you're gonna get it. But, oh well. So, it is what it is. Uh, the Valiant is a striking coin, in my opinion. I do like just the details. You know, the, the horse itself is highly detailed. Again, it looks much better on a smaller scale because all those intricate details that you can see on the larger one are just, it's amplified on the smaller version. Uh, I, I think as you get a lot, or as you increase this tenfold, literally, what happens is, is that those details are just there. Um, so with them being on a much smaller scale, they really do make the, like the horse itself really come to life and, you know, really shine through. I do love it, I have to say, I still do. Uh, despite the milk spot, despite everything else, I mean, the dragon on this is remarkable as I featured previously, but it's kind of odd I'm doing the same coin, but I'm doing it in two different sizes now. And then we have here, 
which is the front. We have the queen's face, two pounds, compared to obviously on the 10 ounce, it was 10 pounds, which I think is a bit interesting because two pounds for one ounce, I'm going to buy five of these <laughs> and I'm getting that, but this is more than double. It should be 20 pounds. Sorry, but that's true. So yeah, they should have either put it at one pound or, at, or had the other at 20 pounds. So, but yeah, there we go. Cause this isn't a two ounce coin and most two ounce coins tend to be two pounds. Hmm. Queen's beast. Yep. There you go. Um, so we see Jody Clark's initials down below. As I said before, there it is. Much harder to spot here on the one ounce coin. There's Queen's face there. And again, that looks like to be on the surface because you can see the reflection. Now, one of the really interesting uh, things here, and I'm gonna make it really known is that when I'm filming something, this is really interesting because it affects a lot of you guys out there as well. When I asked you guys about the Robin Hood coins, and yes, I'm going back down on this uh, rabbit hole again for a second, but when I asked you guys to send me in pictures of the Robin Hood coins, a fair few were saying, no, I can't really see anything. But when you put them under a camera and then you bring it out, and especially with today's technology, I mean, you could use a smartphone, you could use anything. Once you put it onto a camera and you zoom in, every imperfection becomes noticeable. Now, when I'm looking at this coin, and I've looked at it several times, I never spotted the milk spot on the side here. No, actually, I didn't spot that at all. Um, so it's just warm finger there. Um, but when I'm looking at it through the camera, it picks it up straight away. I think that's a bit interesting as a side note, really. Uh, so there we have it. So why would I show you a one ounce coin? What's the benefit over the one ounce to the 10 ounce? Um, here's some consumer advice that, well, I'm not going to give it as advice. Here's some consumer information. Now, if you buy 10 of these coins, it's going to cost you more than buying a 10 ounce bar of silver. Yep, that's right. So this little guy here, I say little, <laughs> look at the size difference, right? This coin here, if you want to call it a coin, um, is actually cheaper to buy than buying 10 of these. Hmm, I find that really interesting. However, I don't want you to jump into the conclusions and thinking, oh, I'm just going to buy that straight away. No, please hear me out for a minute. When it comes time to selling, this guy, this one ounce, will be far easier to sell and quicker to sell than one of these. That's how I've seen it work and play out. Now, expect here in the UK, we pay a lot of VAT, the sales tax uh, for all of you guys in different parts of the, the world. We pay a lot of sales tax on our silver. So we don't get to get the opportunities and offers that you do in America or Canada or just wherever you are in the world. Um, it's really strict. However, worst case scenario, and I've never, I, I it's almost impossible to find silver at spot price second hand. And I know we're talking about two brand new coins. As I said, I will leave a link to the full one ounce, uh, 10 ounce review. When it comes time to resale, well, whatever this is going, let's, let's say hypothetically, I was going to sell it tomorrow. I could probably ask anywhere from 27 to 30 pounds. 27 and you know add postage on top okay on a 10 ounce i'm going to be asking uh, maybe about 280 300 if i'm lucky um and that that would be delivered so although this is cheaper to buy now and although this is a pain because you have 10 of these to sell 
where you are as a stacker, what your plans are as someone who is buying and selling these, this is your options here. And I'm not going to be the one to tell you which is right or wrong, because I could probably get a little bit more for that, probably get a little bit more for that, but it's a bit by the by. So that's where it really is. Um, it's your decision. And no one's to tell you otherwise. That is 100% yours. Not me or anyone. I, I'm happy to stack big bars. I'm happy to stack small things. Uh, in fact, you see a lot of my small stacks and you, you've seen some of my big stack. But it's there's a market out there for everyone. So that's a little bit of consumer advice. So here we go. We have the 1 and 10 ounce uh, Valiance, both 2020, both just amazing. Yes, they come with their flaws. I'm not going to hide behind that. I mean, at the end of the day, gosh, it's, <laughs> I'll have the Royal Mint on me in no time. Um, but the facts are, is that, you know, yes, they're beautiful. And I have Valiants from previous years with zero milk spots on them. And they're just so lovely. But yeah, here we go. Hmm. It's still a lovely design. And I know a lot of you guys think the same way. So let me know how many of you guys actually have the Valiant set in 10 ounce. How many of you have the Valiant set in 1 ounce? Or how many are just buying it because, quite frankly, they like it. And on the flip side of the coin... How many are staying away from it because of whatever reason you may, you know, portray? These are the questions I would love responses to in the bottom of my video. So please make sure that you leave a like and a comment telling me what your thoughts and opinions are on this. And if you have any helpful tips for new stackers, people who are just getting into this, then leave that comment because all of this does help out within our huge community. And that's something that is pretty just special, really. Thank you for watching. As I said, this is John RMS, and I hope you guys have a great day. Stay tuned for Wednesday's video. Bye for now.